Today I would like to share my thoughts on a very important subject. Why developing countries must do their own innovations and research. Now all of us think that we are living under the same planet, planet Earth. But seldom do we realize that this planet has two different planets. One of the haves and the other of the have-nots. And the difference between these two is enormous. Now, if you look at the per capita GDP of the various nations in this world, the results are alarming. From the 66,000 and above of the United States to just hardly $200 and above of many countries. The difference is so huge. And what is worrying is that this difference is increasing every year. When there is so much of discrepancy in the wealth and there is so much of poverty, many things are naturally lost. We always talk and think of the opportunities lost in education. We talk of the opportunities lost for good jobs for adults and the lost opportunities in providing good health. But seldom do we think of something very important, the opportunity to do research and bring self-reliance and innovation. Now, why is this important? If we do not have self-reliance in our research, then the solutions for the problems that we have have often to be sought from the research developed from the developed world. And here comes the problem. Now let us look at the two individuals from the developed country and the two individuals from the poor and developing nations. Now everything is different between them. The other one group has everything that is materialistically available and affordable with them. And the other scarcely has anything that is available to them. And when they get into a medical problem, if we have to discuss on what is the difference between them, it can be summed up in one single word, everything. Everything is different. The type of the disease they get, the treatment that is available, the infrastructure that is available, the cost provider, their affordability, and even their expectations from the treatment is completely different. So when everything is different, the solution cannot be the same. Now let us take the example of this gentleman who has got severe arthritis, which is a universal phenomenon across the world. He is so severely disabled that he has to have at least two people to help him with his activities of daily life. Now, it is not that the solution is not available for his problem. But the joint replacement surgery that is necessary for him actually is almost costing about 18 months of his salary. So scarcely available for him. Now, the reason why less costly joint replacements are not being found or employed in this world is that 95% of the research regarding arthritis 95% of the production of joint replacement processes and all the biological and mechanical research that is associated with this disease is done in the developed world. And when the solution comes from the West, it naturally comes with the costs, the business plans, profits of the developed world. And so the solution becomes very expensive. These solutions escalate the cost to the poor and the needy and often makes it unaffordable and escalates the profits for the business world. So a solution that is not affordable is not a real solution at all. So self-innovation is the key and we know that it can be otherwise. Let me take you through the story of Orolab of Aravind Hospitals Madurai in India. Now in the early 90s, India was the home to the largest number of preventable blindness due to cataract. And cataract surgery was always performed without an intraocular lens. But in 
But we know that the quality of the vision you get after surgery with and without an intraocular lens is very vastly different. But the markets and the big business houses were not interested in India because they did not consider it as a viable market because each of these lens cost $100 and most of these poor people were not able to afford it at all. Now, when Aravind Hospital was established by Dr. Vengdasamy with the vision to eradicate preventable blindness, they realized that the single most important factor why all the people who are having cataract surgery cannot have the benefits of the intraocular lens was the cost, the $100 per lens cost. And so they decided to manufacture it themselves. And you would be surprised to know that they could provide a lens which was equally good in quality by their indigenous research and production for the cost of just $2. And because of this 50 times price difference, it then became possible that they could extend the benefits of this to millions and millions of people across the world. From just 150 lenses a day when they started, they are now manufacturing more than 12,000 lenses and actually serve nearly 15% of the world market. Now, this is not just numbers alone, but this enabled learning and industrial production actually benefited a lots and lots of people. And it also allowed them to extend their research capabilities to other areas of ophthalmology. So research is very important in the developing world because it leads to empowerment and capacity building and avoids knowledge dependence, which is worse than economic dependence. But that will bring a question in your mind. Why is then research not performed in developing countries? Now the answer is that research sometimes needs large infrastructure and it also needs a lot of funds and grants, trained personnel and experts in the field of research. Now this may sometimes be not available in the developing countries. While this is true to a large extent, I would like to emphasize that in many aspects of medical research, an inquisitive mind, careful observation, documentation of data and analysis may be quite sufficient. And I would like to bring the, our experience taking spinal tuberculosis as an example. Now you all know that tuberculosis is one of the deadliest disease. It is as old as man himself, but unfortunately is still not a disease of the past. And as a result, Although we have these gross spinal deformities in the mummies in the Egyptian primates, still a lot of children and young people around the world suffer from the same deformities. Now the surgical cure for this is possible, but that is a surgery of great magnitude with a certain amount of mortality and morbidity. And what is more important is that wherever tuberculosis is very common, the facility for these major surgeries are not available. And wherever the facility is available, tuberculosis is not uh, prevalent. Now this discrepancy actually made us think. And just by careful observation of these children over a period of 15 years, we found out a very simple and effective method of documenting four simple signs in plain radiographs, which will actually allow us to identify the subset of these small children who are at risk for severe progression of deformity. That made it possible that just these people, these children can be subjected to surgery, allowing us a gross preservation of resource and economics and safety for these children. Another area where we concentrated was on severe injuries of limbs like these, especially in developing world in countries like India, where there is one death on the Indian roads every three minutes and there are about 7.5 lakh big accidents every year. It becomes very important that we have a very good method of how these limbs could be salvaged. Now we documented all important data 
and devised new methods of treatments for these and evolved the Ganga Hospital Open Injury Score, which allowed us to identify patients and to also develop a sequence of management events, which gave them excellent result. Now, this is known as the Ganga philosophy of care of open injuries. And this has actually allowed us to treat major injuries like this, which normally go into amputation or severe deformities and disabilities of limb and almost restore the limb to completely normal life. Now, these are two big examples where thousands of lives and limbs have been saved just by research adopting good observation, good documentation, an inquisitive mind and good analysis. Now, there is an important reason why developing countries should seek their own solutions. And that is because there is always a question of genuinity when the results come from elsewhere. Because unfortunately, it is now very well known that what results you get in research often depends upon who funds the research. In this important publication in the British Medical Journal, it was found that considering about 200 major clinical trials done across the world, only 8% of them were conducted independent of pharmaceutical or industry sponsors. And about 87% of trials were co-authors and steered by the industry partners. Now, the trial sponsors were also responsible for data analysis I mean, 73% of the trials. And when this is so, the genuinity of the results becomes highly questionable. And that is the reason why, even if you take a simple aspect of low back pain, which is one of the most common musculoskeletal disorders in the world, we have adopted nearly 16 different types of interventions in these patients in the last many years. And unfortunately, all the good results which are purported in major generals by industry sponsored trials have not stood the test of time in ground reality. And the outcomes are sometimes no better than just conservative treatment. So it becomes important that if you have to do good and something nice for your patients, you need to do research yourself and make sure that the treatments that you give are good for the patient. But lastly, the most important reason of all, sickness is expensive to treat and newer treatments are more expensive and profitable to the medical industry. It is no wonder that the developed world and the trial sponsors, are, as the population grows and the percentage of aging population increases, even the most developed countries are struggling to meet the healthcare needs. Just taking the United States as an example, their healthcare spending grew 4.6% in just one year of 2019 alone, reaching a 3.8 trillion whopping amount of dollars, accounting to nearly $11,582 per person. This also accounted for nearly 17.7% of the GDP of the whole country. Poor countries can scarcely afford this. It would be more wise to prevent a disease than to treat it. But it would be surprising to see that the preventive care spending in the US constituted only 2.9% of the total health care expenditures in 2018. Prevention is not only better, but is also much cheaper than curing of the disease. And that is exactly the reason it is not interesting for the research process in the developing world. Where there is no profit, there is very little money for research. Let us take the example of old China, where a doctor was paid when his patients stayed well. So he was actually interested in the lifestyle, nutrition, family issues, home environment, etc. And he was actually more of a health teacher to the whole family. Sickness of the family made the doctor a pauper 
and it was in his interest to practice good preventive medicine. And we took up this cue in Ganga Hospital. And actually all our research have not only been looking at how to prevent back pain, but also how to prevent back pain. And that was the cue on which we established the Gamma Research Center and a small group of clinicians and basic tech, uh, researchers. We have come together to look at various aspects on how low back pain can be prevented. We have looked at the nutrition of the disc and how to improve the nutrition of the disc and what is the genetic and proteomic and molecular basis of disc degeneration and how we can take cue from many of the radiological and clinical parameters on how this big malady of mankind can be prevented. Now, that has not only given us a lot of international awards, but it has also given us the sole satisfaction that we are ambassadors of wellness and not ambassadors of cure of the sickness. So, lastly, my message is, if you are a clinician or a doctor from the developing world, there is much you can do to the welfare of humanity through clinical research. We just have to convert ourselves from clinician to a clinician scientist. It is not research only if it is at the molecular level. High funder, high budget research is not the only research. These are usually often chasing more expensive remedies for old diseases. What the world actually needs now is preventive medicine. And this is where genuine research for the welfare of the world is required. So there is much to do and much that each one of us can do when you are a doctor in the developing world. So why wait? Thank you very much for this opportunity to share my views. Thank you.